with Sky and Paul Gilmore. So, Paul, I'm coming to you. Hi, Jose. Hello, Paul. Uh, Jose, what did you make of the solution to play Fulham and, and how does that impact on your preparations for the game? <laughs> the biggest impact is to have matches postponed. That is the biggest impact. Um, the changing of, uh, let's say, the order of, of the matches, uh, the impact is, I would say, minimal, because in the end, in the end, you have to play 19 matches at home and 19 matches away. You have to play two matches against every team. So, if to help, if it's to help uh, the Premier League to go and to hand properly, I think is a solution that we all have to we all have to accept as a positive solution. Oh, you got any more questions? Hello, Paul. No. Okay, we'll move on to. We'll move on to George, BBC. George. Hello, Jose. Thanks, Simon. Um, Jose, I know it's not a manager's fault, but there's been a lot made of uh, players' celebrations in dressing rooms at the FA Cup. Is football on a bit of last chance saloon? Are you worried the government's going to call games off because the players aren't showing enough responsibility at the moment? And will you be reminding your players of the responsibilities they need to take? Well, I, in terms of dressing room, I don't believe that uh, at the Premier League level, in any team dressing room, we have this kind of of celebrations just by winning uh, three points in in the Premier League. Um, when you go down, when you go to FA Cup, when you go to the killing giants when you know to these incredible moments in some clubs and players' careers that can happen because it's uh, the wild emotion of uh, of normal football that uh, can push to that. Um, I think now they will not repeat that. I think now with... Um, the exposure and the comments and uh, the explanation of of the risks. I think now the boys, even with that crazy happiness of a big day for them, they will control. Uh, during the matches uh, at the Premier League level, the celebration of of a goal, I think more and more and more is becoming less. Um, I feel by myself, I don't even celebrate goals, almost. Uh, because of the VAR, I adapt or I went in a certain direction of controlling emotions that I believe the players can also do a little bit of the same. Uh, you know, but the reality is that uh, what come to the big exposure was some celebrations after matches in the in the dressing room and. In a normal situation, that would be the beauty of a football, the beauty of a, a small team beating a giant. But in this moment, even them, they have to to control. They have to adapt. And are we entering a crucial time with all this? And will you be speaking to your, some of your players to just remind them? You know, they need to take responsible. They need to act responsibly in a wider climate. We do it Thank all you. the time. We do it all the time. Uh, many, many times before um, the tactical meetings, we have um, meetings with with the medicals and with the ones that have the responsibility to control. We have always data for the players. We have also advice. We have also explanation about about the rules we are very critic when we have a reason to be to be critic so we all do our our best and um, we are all very very happy when like it happened 
uh, today, for example, we got the results of the last testing and we realize how well we are trying to do it. Okay, we've got a James at TalkSport. Jose, we know it's a season where teams are going to have to adapt to situations at short notice, but do you feel it's acceptable that Fulham have only had just over 48 hours to prepare for a game that they didn't think they'd be playing tomorrow night? Are you serious? They had 48 hours to prepare for this game. Do you think so? In terms of knowing the match has been scheduled, that was when it was confirmed. Look, I I had the news that I was not going to, to play them two hours before the game start. Next question, James. You obviously managed Scott Parker when you were at Chelsea. What have you made of his career so far as a manager and what he's done at Fulham? I'm very happy. Um was a great guy, great professional, team player. Um, when he decided to go to to Newcastle to to play more than he was playing with us, that showed his character, that showed his personality. And after that, he had a very good career, Premier League, uh, even national team. Then he went uh, back to Fulham on his learning process as a as a coach and progressively you got the job and what can you say promotion and uh, and after promotion is showing also that is very capable to to give them the stability to stay in in the premier league so i like him very much he knows that i never had it and he feels it so i'm very happy with um, the good things that is uh, that is doing okay we got a fay at the premier league Hi, Jose. Um, Hello. Obviously, Scott Parker's made his side really hard to, to beat lately. What do you need to do against them to make sure you're in control of this game? It's, in this moment, it's difficult to play against them. Um, to defend the way they do it, five in the back and sometimes a second line of four, other times with three um, it's not easy to score goals against them that's obvious and then they have um, different ways of being dangerous Uh, one thing is to be dangerous with Mitrovic another thing is to be dangerous without Mitrovic and uh, they are they are good in in these different situations they can counter-attack well they can arrive in crossing positions and create difficulties they are a good team they transform a little bit their um, their philosophy they understood they understood well how to change they did it they're having results and it's going to be difficult and have any of your players played their way into your starting 11 for, for Wednesday's match after their performances at the weekend? Nothing to do one thing with another thing. I told before the game that was not the game to to analyse performances, was the game to analyse attitudes and principles. And at that level, I believe that is not just me. I, I even had some some whispers from other friends in football, everybody admired the way my players faced that game, the respect that they faced that game. And at that level, I'm very pleased with everyone that was on that pitch. Okay, Luis Restrepo. Luis. Oh, hello, Jose. Hello, How Luis. Are How are you? Um, I, ju- I just, I mean, I know that you don't like to talk about individuals, but I'd like to ask you about Davinson Sanchez. What is your opinion about his performance? Because we saw him in one game, being in the initial 11 and in the other ones in the bench. Do you think he's, he's in a good level at the moment and he could be in the initial 11 in the rest, I mean, in the next games, for example? It happens the same with all our central defenders. Davison, Alderweireld, Dyer, 
Rodan, Tanganga. It's not like one of them is playing every match and the other one is not is not playing. So Davison didn't play the the last match, um, but played a few, and uh, that's how it is. And what is the 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 actual moment of Lo Celso? If we can, if you can, say something about it. He's injured. Yeah, he's injured. Uh, he's going to to be out for a long time. A few weeks. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on to Jerry Cox. Jerry. Hi, Jose. Can you hear me? Okay. Hello. Hi. Oh, yeah. Um, there's been a lot of reports about Harry Winks suggesting a, a, a loan move to Spain. Can you say anything about that? Is he has he got a future at Spurs? How? What do I have to say to stop with this? Uh, with this talk, I told already, he's going nowhere. He's going nowhere. So when I say he's going nowhere, what do you want me more to uh, to say? He plays. He played the last matches. He didn't play the last one. It was a decision to let play other players like uh, Jetson and uh, players that are not basically playing many minutes. Tomorrow he's selected again. And if somebody is speaking with with other clubs, my advice is don't lose your time. Don't lose your time because he's going nowhere. And and quickly, Alfie Devine, he, he obviously captured uh, a lot of attention that weekend with his big smile. Is he still smiling? What's his reaction been in training? I don't know because I sent him back to the academy. Uh, when you reach that that high moment now it's time to it's time to go back to to where he belongs and it's time to calm down because as you're saying lots of lots of lights on him so now is moment to calm down and go back to academy so i don't want to see him for uh, maybe one or two weeks let him be there Okay, Ali Gold. Hi there, Jose. Hello. Um, first off, just want to ask you if Eric Lamella is available for this match. He is, but I, but I don't know. But uh, I think you understand what I want to mean. He can be selected tomorrow. He can. Legally, he can. But I still have a, a decision to make. Okay, fair enough. Um, and the second thing I just want to ask you is actually about another young player, one who, who's not at the club at the moment, Oliver Skip, um, getting lots of praise out on loan at Norwich. I just wondered, obviously, kind of what you've made of that. And also, if you can... Is there any temptation to bring him back or is it better for his development to stay there and keep playing matches? In a selfish perspective, it would be good to bring him back now. But we are not selfish. The players are very important. The future is very important. And the best thing for him is to finish the season there and a uh, very successful loan for us and also for Norwich. So we are very happy that he's playing, he's playing well, he's playing to win, he's playing to win titles, so he has that pressure on, on him too. He's playing two, three matches uh, a week, so there is also a, a physical uh, development. And next season is... Um, is back, but we believe that for this season the best thing is is to stay at uh, at Norwich, and is also very happy with that. Okay, we'll finish with Jack Pitbrook and then Paul Gilmore, and then we'll move on to the written section. Jack, hi Jose. Um, Hello. You were positive about Jedson Fernandez's performance on Sunday. Do you know if he will stay at Tottenham for the rest of the season or go back to Benfica? I don't know. I don't know. If he stays, I'm happy again by a selfish 
point of view, I'm very happy if he stays because he's a good player. Mm. And uh, when we need him, we know that we have some quality coming from uh, from him. Of course, it's a pity that he's not in, in the Europa League list. Uh, we played already nine matches in the Europa League. I would imagine that playing Europa League would be a much happier situation for him. Mm. But in a selfish look at it, I would like him to stay. <laughs> but again, we are not selfish. Uh, we also think about the players. And in this case, we also think about the, the father club. So we have just to wait. Thank you. Okay, we'll finish with Paul. Paul, a couple more from you, okay? Hi, sorry, Jose, I had some uh, mute problems. Um, have there been discussions about signing Nicolas Gonzalez from Stuttgart? Discussions with who? Not with me. With the, with the club? Is he a player you're interested in? No. No. And, and just finally, um, what did you make of uh, Mesut Ozil saying he would rather retire than sign for Tottenham? But who told him that Tottenham is interested in signing him? No okay. chance. 